Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi and today we're going to take a quick look at the new Dior eyeshadow in 183 Plum Tutu. So this is one of the new quints from Dior and this is a little different than one of the previous color stories because we're actually taking a combination of 769 Tutu from the old formula and 159 Plum Tool. So this is Plum Tutu. So it's kind of a mix of these color stories. So this one here, 769 Tutu, has been a little bit cooler in tone. You've got more of the like blue wisteria type of purple and plum tool has more of a violet base, a little bit more red in there. So let's take a look. Well, we're gonna start off with some swatches. So we're gonna start off with arm swatches for 183 Plum Tutu. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at some eye swatches. And then we have a demo for today's look as well. And then we will do comparison swatches with Tutu and Plum Tool. And then after that, well, well, while we're doing that, we'll talk a little bit about the formula, the details, how this compares to the Dior Khaki Quad. So Khaki is another one of the new ones. I have already reviewed that one. And unfortunately it just didn't hold up to the original version of the palette, the jungle palette, which was similar. And I just didn't love that formula. I will leave that review link down below. So let's see how this one compares. So these are the swatches here in Plum Tutu. And you can see here that we have kind of this bronzy coppery shimmer here, followed by kind of a light pink champagne. There's a little bit of pink in there. And then these three are all gonna be kind of like your velvet mattes. And so we have a deep eggplant purple. So this one's gonna be a little bit cooler in tone, has more blue in it followed by this deep rose. And then last up is a little bit of a red base purple. So this is more of a plum. So let's take a look at the eye swatches. All right, so while we're looking at the eye swatches, I did the right eye using the Sonia G Soft Shader Brush so you can see what it looked like with a brush application. And the left eye is done with a finger application so you can see what it will look like built up a little bit. Now, just a few details about the palette here. It is a seven gram product palette. So this is going to be equivalent to the permanent shades in the original Dior line. And we have a six month shelf life and these are made in France. Again, we have five shades. One of the differences between the new palettes and the old palettes are the applicators. So in the previous formula, we had dual ended applicators, a foam tip and a brush tip. And now on this side here in the new ones, we actually just have single sided. So there's one brush and one foam tip applicator. So I'll take a look at, I'll show you those when we take a look at the comparison swatches. But while you're looking at these demos, you can see here that the shimmers go on very nicely. They're very similar to those in the old formula. You know, maybe not quite as creamy as those, but definitely no issues with those. Those perform very nicely. You get plenty of opacity with the brush or the finger application. They are a little glittery, so you are gonna get a little bit of, you know, kick up in the pan with these. You can get a little bit of fallout depending on how well you tap off your brush. Moving on to the three matte shades. Now, the one in the center, the deep eggplant, that one there has a little bit of texture from the embossing on there, and it does feel a little bit easier to pick up when you're first using that. It goes on a little bit more smoothly, but you know, as that kind of, the embossing kind of fades away, it does end up performing the same as the two bottom shades that do not have any embossing. So, you know, pick up on all three of these shades is great. No problem with those. They are a little bit of a powdery texture. If you've used the Dior Velvet Formula Shadows that came out last, last fall, I believe those were kind of a tester to kind of test out the formula, but that is the same formula that they're using now with their velvets or matte shadows. It has the cornflower extract and so forth in there. And I find them to be, um, they're okay. They're something a little different. I preferred them more as a limited edition velvet quint because it's just something a little different to change things up. But for them to move all the way 
in this direction for their permanent quince. I personally don't like them. I find that certain shades apply better than others, whereas some end up being very patchy. And you can see that in the application here with both the brush and the fingers, you know, that these matte shades, they definitely kind of accumulate in certain areas more so than others. They don't spread out quite as smoothly and some colors are better than others. So while I would have to say that this palette overall compared to the Dior Khaki one, this one does perform slightly better than that one. That one is definitely a bit more sheer in color, lighter in tone. Um, the mattes in there were, you know, uh, they're, they're equivalent, but they were slightly smoother than these. I feel like this one is a little bit better than the khaki. However, significantly, no. Uh, would I recommend this palette? You know, if you are interested in the color story and you're going to utilize those shimmers, I think the shimmers really help hide any imperfections with the matte. So if you're t intending on topping things off with these shimmer shades, then yes, this palette would definitely be something easy to work with. However, if you're looking for an all matte look with these, I feel like these are too patchy and just personally not great. Honestly, I would not recommend the new Dior Quince overall. I feel like they are going to be hit or miss in general. And if you are interested in them, I would definitely recommend those with more shimmers in the palettes versus the matte shades. I feel like it's the matte shades that are more prob problematic than others. So overall, it's an okay palette. There's a color story that I really like. I will still probably pick up some of these Dior Quince. However, I think overall my love affair with the Dior Quince has ended with this reformulation. I've also not been very impressed with the new blushes. One out of three that I picked up performed very well. The other two, you know, it's the Chanel blushes all over again. So I'll leave that video linked down below in the description box as well in case you missed that. But let's go ahead and move on to some arm swatches of Plum Tool and Tutu. All right, so this one here is Tutu. And, you know, we're going to actually put this on my other arm so we can keep everything kind of separate. So here is the first shade. Now, the second shade here is actually a topper. So you're not really going to be able to see it. You just see a tiny touch of glitter there. Uh, it's really not... A pigmented shade it is kind of a soft pink but you can see that first shade is kind of a soft dusty mauve and this middle shade here is a bit more of a rosy mauve kind of shade it's gonna be a little bit deeper however the shade that really makes the 2-2 palette stand out and is absolutely one of my favorites is this blue wisteria satin shade I love this shade and this is what really makes this a worthwhile palette now you can still pick up these your original palettes at different retailers. For example, like Ulta still has them. I would, you know, honestly, if you haven't picked up this color story, but it's one you're interested in, I would definitely uh, take a look. So here is Tutu against Plum Tutu. And you can see here that really the closest shade is going to be the middle shade versus the bottom shade in Tutu. And then we have kind of these like rosy mauve tones that are similar to the last shade in Plum Tutu, but they're gonna be much softer in the Tutu palette. Let's take a look at Plum Tool. So this is Plum Tool. This one is gonna be a little bit more pink based overall, but we're starting off with kind of this beautiful kind of silvery champagne with a, a touch of taupe in there. So it's not gonna be completely cool. And then we have kind of this white here and this white is a shimmer or a satin, but you can see that you have a little bit of a pink iridescence there. There's a little bit of a pink flip with that shade. And again, I think that's something that really kind of stands out in this palette. Now the middle shade here is kind of more of a blue based purple here. It's kind of like your pretty neutral purple shade. Let's just make that a little bit deeper there so you can see that a little bit better. And that's a nice shade that's really gonna be kind of you know, a, a great complement to some of these, this more redder shade that we have here at the end. Now, this shade here is more of a satin, kind of a rosy taupe. There is a touch of pink in there. And then our last shade here looks very pink in the pan, but you can see it's gonna be a little bit more purple based on the skin, but it is kind of this like rosy purple shade. 
that's going to be closest to this last shade here in Plum Tutu. However, you can see there is more purple in Plum Tool. So let's go ahead and just do a few side-by-side -side comparisons of those that really are the closest. Now, as we're looking at Plum Tutu, these first two shades, these are going to be significantly warmer than anything in Tutu or Plum Tool. We don't have anything quite like those. The closest is probably this like white pink iridescence with the second shade here, but they're honestly not that close. Let's focus more on these three mattes. So let's start off with the middle shade here. We're going to go ahead and put this just kind of straight down the arm here. And let's take a look at the shades here and we'll look at the middle shade in Plum Tool. And you can see that this is going to be lighter. It's going to be, a, you know, it's, it's got a little bit more blue in it, but it's significantly lighter. There's not so much of that like dark base. And then let's take a look at the last shade in Tutu here. And you can see that that's going to be closer, but the one in Tutu is going to be a little bit deeper. Not sure if you can really tell with the swatch, but you can see that the matte in Tutu is going to be a smoother matte. So just something to note. Let's take a look at this bottom reddish shade here. And you can see even on my finger that the color just isn't as smooth. So here's this. Now we don't have anything too close in Tutu. Our closest is a middle shade. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Just put that right there. You can see that's going to be dustier, uh, really just not really uh, comparable. And then this is our bottom shade here, this pink shade in Plum Tool. And you can see how purple it is in comparison here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this last one and see how this compares. So this is the last shade here in Plum Tutu. And you can see how close those two shades are. And again, we don't really have a comparison in here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the last shade in Tutu. We'll just put that there. And let's just go ahead and do this one from Plum Tool one more time, just so we can kind of see how close those are. So just to review the swatches, these five here, the new Quint Plum Tutu. And then we have Tutu from the original formula and Plum Tool from the original formula. When we're looking at these comparisons, these vertical lines are Plum Tutu in the new quad. And then we have these shades here from Tutu and Plum Tool. So from going from the bottom, we have Tutu, Plum Tool, Plum Tool, Tutu. And then this is going to be Tutu and Plum Tool. So just a kind of a quick review there of those swatches. You can see that the new palette is sort of a mashup of previous shades, but they definitely made it a little bit different. There's definitely a bit more warmth in there by adding in these more coppery tone shades here. And we've got a bit more pink in here than more pink and red than what we had in either Tutu or Plum Tool. Now my personal preference is still the original Tutu for the formula as well as the color story. That is my favorite followed by the Plum Tool and then the Plum Tutu is kind of a distant third. So uh, there are definitely some other options I would recommend over this. So that's kind of a, a summation of what we have for this palette. Now, before uh, we finish up, I just wanted to show you real quickly what this palette does come with. So we do have a plastic tray and these are the two new utensils that they come with. So they are very, very lightweight. This feels like aluminum handle. And then we have one brush and one foam tip applicator. And again, the previous ones were dual ended. So you would have a dual ended brush and a dual ended foam tip applicator. So overall, um, you know, that's kind of how things shake up color wise, packaging wise, they are the same size. We have the same amount of product in each, but I do prefer the older packaging, which has the push bar to open it up. I find that to be easier because quite often if I've recently done my nails or something, lifting up at the CD belt logo, you have to kind of use your nail in there and that, you know, obviously will mar any fresh nails and 
it's just, you know, not a favorite. Now the new blushes do have the old eyeshadow formula packaging. So just something to note there. And yeah, that's basically it for this. I'd love to know your thoughts. Is this worth picking up? You know, it's, it's kind of a toss up. If you love the colors, it's not a bad palette. Is it a great palette? Is No. Is it worth the money? It's a personal preference. For me though, I think I will be abstaining from most of the new Dior palettes. I think I'm kind of, kind of done with these reformulations and I hope they decide to reformulate these again and go in a better direction with them. So thank you so much for tuning in. Now, just a note before I sign off, I did just get a puppy. I know I've talked about wanting a puppy on my channel before, and I've had quite a few requests to include just a little bit of content with that. This is obviously not going to be switching to a dog channel, but if you do have any particular questions or anything you'd like to see, please let me know. And I will be doing a video very soon, just kind of going over our new addition. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a great day.